So, I thought I had um, finished this, but uh, I noticed looking at it, I wasn't quite happy with some of the skin textures around the bottom lip. So that was the uh, first thing I went through and corrected. I didn't like it coming down like that. I felt like the shadow needed to come in more. Uh, the problem is the skin textures were already there, so I had to correct them by using my uh, skin layers. Um, that way we continue that textured tone through it. I uh, might end up bringing that down a bit more there. But what I want to show you is um, the metallics that I had made for shoes and for tops and things like that. So we've got these um, speckled looks. And we just put them across into our Paint Shop Profile into the um, patterns. So Paint Shop Pro. 2022 whatever version you're running from patterns and then we'll be able to select it in paint shop pro itself uh, you can come through and modify these i'll put them up for uh, download but you can actually adjust them any way you like um, by using the tone mapper um, so we come into the adjustments hue saturations the tone map so if you wanted a different sort of color to use you could create a different type of gold tone. Uh, we can bring up the lightness on it and adjust it to where you want to actually use it and what's going to work for um, what you're doing. So, right. I do want to go through and make a, a better gold than the one that I um, had made earlier. But for now, we'll show you how this one works. So we come through, select our pattern, and I made the blue one for this. And we're just going to flood that screen on a new layer. Create that as a hide all mask. Of course, we're going to deselect that. Go to white, paint on the mask area. So we'll come down. Increase the size there. Increase the size a lot. And we'll paint that um, metallic in. This may not suit the uh, era of the uh, image, but it's just to um, show you guys the um, the texture and the way it looks. Um, I designed it for um, ballerina slippers that were in a uh, gold tone and a uh, ruby red, that Julie Garland look. And of course, we can come through and we can change what we want it as. And turn down the opacity of it so it's see-through. Oh, there we go. Bring that up a bit. I might go on full actually. Okay, let's have a look at the different sort of... I found with the one I did earlier, I just went to normal and I dropped it down so the uh, clothes underneath showed through and that allowed for a, uh, a more sparkly tone. So we'll leave it there. Back to the mask layer. Those mask layers are uh, very, very handy. It makes it a lot quicker. Uh, what's good about it, rather than just going through and painting, um, so using that uh, pattern and just painting it down. Uh, by doing it as a mask layer, because it's just coming through where the white is, you can actually use the smudge to push it into the hard-to-get places without actually damaging the uh, texture itself that you've laid down. So it makes it really easy just to clean up and fix the corners. Let's come through. There we go. I always like going through all these to see what sort of effect that it actually has to offer because the different um, blend methods react differently with the underlying uh, layer. Hard light looks great. I'll leave it as hard light. Done. Might back it down a little bit. Let's see if we can get some more of the underlying details through. 
There's a nice cheat method for some of the underlying uh, layers. If you create a new layer, slap it down like that, and we'll move it to here. And you want to make some of these details here stand out. We can actually just go through, take a, sh uh, a shadowed area, come over here, make it nice and small. We don't want it big, really small. Okay, that should work with this image. Let's have a look. Take that off, zoom out. We seem to have a bit of a line running down here. So just going to copy that in. Okay. And now we're just going to smudge it a little bit. I think the smudge brush is by far my uh, favourite tool. I just want to find that uh, edge a bit. There we go. Oh, pull that in. Okay. Okay. Just sort of work it in a little bit. We don't want it to be um, a dominant look. We want it to be really faint. So it's just making that uh, collar line stand out a little bit more than what it was. Okay, put a little bit more on there. Blow that up. Where would that go? Okay, so it probably comes through here. I'll make it a little bit bigger. We really need to fix that uh, zoom on Paint Shop. It used to be um, you'd zoom out. So you go like that and you go, okay, I want to focus in on this little spot here and it would take you right into where that is. But now when you do it, it has a bad habit of not putting it in the center of the screen where it should be. It used to centerize it. Now you're taken up and you're like, well, that's not in the center. I want it in the center. I'd rather it be like with seven, you'd put it like that. So, Paint Shop Pro seem to have uh, buggered up a little bit when they've um, done some of these updates. This is the Retail 2022 version. I don't know how different that is from the online version. Uh, perhaps the online version's got better um, patches. There we go. We'll thicken that up. And bring that in. Um, one of those bugs seems to be a memory thing where it just disappears on you. And it's like, yep, yeah, that's annoying. You have to zoom in and out. Really bad when you're erasing areas. Like I said before, this is not a small system. It's a uh, large system. So, um, you know, 64 gig of RAM. And then we come in and we go, well, let's see how much of RAM it's actually using. More details. We go performance. And we're using 6.2 gig total. I mean, this one's a um, 32 megabyte system. So we've got 25 gig available. And it's not even using it, which is um, a bit of a shame. And we can see here that it's only using 604 megabyte of memory. And it clearly has memory glitches. Nope, there we go. I hate that uh, save time. It always likes to pop up at uh, an inopportune moment. Okay. Don't mind the uh, washing machine running in the background there. Got to have clean clothes. I'll do that bit. Okay, and that just highlights it. Now you can go through and uh, add some other shades on it. Uh, that way it's not all one shade. I'm just going to pull it down a little bit. There we go. When I'm smudging in, I do the whole clickety-click. So it's over and over in small circular motions or in the direction of the shadow, uh, which is a great help. Um, now with this, because we've got the skin texture down, we want to fix that just a tiny little bit. If we go like that, we're actually going to remove our layer, which we don't really want to do. So 
we're going to go to the warp brush and we're just going to just ever so slightly nope, oh, I'm on the wrong layer there we go I'm going to show you how to do it uh, no, undo okay come down to this layer so you just want to move it ever so slightly okay because if we smudge it as I was saying earlier we end up losing all that detail and we don't want that we want to shift it but not lose it so you go through little bit by little bit I've also uh, used the warp tool just to give it a slight smile as well uh, you can use PNGs off the internet, um, so it has a transparent background and just type realistic smiles. Um, and you can paste that onto a layer and then use the warp tool to actually move it into position uh, till you add an area where you're actually happy with it. Um, or you can cheat and use um, an app like on Android, Face App, which will just automatically put a smile in there. Uh, I personally don't like the uh, paid versions. Um, just move that back a bit. There we go. Very, very slight increments when you're coming through fixing it. Okay. We come to our skin layer. Yes, we want that. Wrong layer. Always use a mask because it's easier to push it. I'll just push that down. These are textured. Uh, it has my um, skin texture on it, so it um, meshes with the existing skin texture. Um, one of the layers is a concrete layer. Um, and we have it done as a uh, skin tone color, where I've literally just copied the skin tone, done it, and um, put a slight translucency on it. Okay. Very slight. If you've got a nice bright monitor with good colours, you should see uh, ever so slightly the shifting of the um, skin tone that we're working on here. I'm just going to pull that down. What we want to do is we want to get that uh, highlight running through to blend with the rest of the picture. And just like that. I think that's good. There we go. Okay. So that is that. Uh, we'll try and work out what else we can nitpick here. I'm going to duplicate that back layer. We can go through different colors that way. And we'll pick that one and we'll change that. I want to find something which complements the actual image. So we'll come down to where are we? Uh, we'll just use the, um, the quick adjustment for it. What we might do is pull that saturation out and give it a uh, grey background instead. There we go. And we're going to bring that brightness up. Should make the image pop a bit. Okay. So now we have the before and the after. 